Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I would be remiss this morning if I didn't mention a few connections, especially since we've been talking about baptism all, uh, all year long so far. Um, you may have noticed that in our liturgy this morning when we gave Thanksgiving for baptism, we all, we all cried out, look, here is water. And in our Acts reading today, it was Philip and the eunuch. And the eunuch says, look, here's water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? That's the passage that that part of the liturgy comes from. And honestly, today's passages, all of them are so rich and uh, so, uh, so many messages and so many things that we could talk about, so much that I could preach on. And it took me a really long time to decide where to go in the sermon this week, and I finally did. And then it happened uh, every once in a while, not super often, but every now and then I encounter something that caused me to completely change the sermon right before I have to preach. And yesterday was one of those times. So I want to share a story with you about um, what happened to me yesterday. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I had the privilege of attending a beautiful last lecture, although those of you who know Dr. Beck know it won't be the last lecture, but last lecture <laughs> and retirement party of one of my oldest mentors. And by oldest, I don't just mean like he's been my mentor for a long time. I mean, he's 92. So he is a, an older mentor, the Reverend Dr. Norman Beck of TLU. Now, I know some of you are probably shaking your heads out there. You likely had him. Um, he began teaching at Texas Lutheran 49 years ago in 1975. So in other words, it is possible that he has taught three generations of students in the same family. Now, I didn't have the opportunity to take a Dr. Beck class because I didn't attend TLU as a student. But in 2007, another mentor of mine, Daryl Koenig, got sick. He was the youth ministry uh, coordinator for our synod, and he had started the youth ministry concentration uh, under the theology department at Texas Lutheran. So he got sick in the middle of the fall semester. And I called Dr. Beck because a couple years earlier, I'd gotten my master's in youth and family ministry. And so I wanted to let Dr. Beck know that if he needed any help, I was there to substitute. And he said, well, I think we're okay right now, but... I'm going to write your name down, and I'll let you know. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for calling. Um, so he did take a note of that, apparently, because a week before the next semester started, I got a call from Dr. Beck saying, um, we're going to need you to teach. School starts Monday. <laughs> it was a crazy time preparing. And so I began my time teaching at Texas Lutheran in January 2007. And so much happened in the next 11 years. I had the opportunity to teach a number of students, not only in the theology department and youth ministry, but as a, um, a professor of uh, intro to theology. I ended up getting to serve in campus ministry as well, preaching and leading Bible studies and interacting with a whole bunch of other students that weren't in my classes and getting to know them. And on a trip to Germany with this group of students in campus ministry, it was there that I heard my call finally to ordained ministry. So while I never got to take class with Dr. Beck, I got to work with him. I got to teach alongside him, attend chapel with him, shape the course of the youth ministry concentration at TLU, influence the lives of many students as I spent numerous hours not only teaching, but life coaching and listening and mentoring them as well, caring for students and faculty. Basically, what I didn't realize at the time that Dr. Beck called was that in hiring me, what Dr. Beck had done was invite me to abide at TLU. Which means that while TLU changed my whole life, so did Dr. Beck. The campus ministry theme the year I went back to seminary to become a pastor was Abide. And we even had a song that our campus pastor, Greg Ronning, had adapted from a famous Beatles tune um, that was for this gospel passage today. I abide, you abide, we abide, yeah, living in the vine of Christ. You're welcome. You're going to sing that all day now, too. <laughs> in fact, the first time I preached about our gospel passage that we read today was in the chapel at TLU, and it was one of the first times I preached. Now, in that sermon, 
about abide. I preached about my cat who had just died a week before, and I preached about what it was like to abide with the cat. But so today, talking about Dr. Beck is a little bit of a step up from that sermon. But either way, let me explain what it means to abide. When you abide with someone, you don't just get to know them. You learn about what it means to share, like when siblings have to learn how to share the toys or share the space or share their parents. You learn about compromise when one person wants one thing and one person wants the other, and you need to find a win-win solution. You learn about caring for someone else. You learn about what it means to truly think of their needs. The more we abide with someone, the more we are changed. So if you think about it this way, um, I don't know about you, but uh, when I travel to different parts of the country and spend a little bit of time there, I start adopting the, the sayings of that place. Um, all over the country, we have different kind of lingos. Up north, it's soda pop. Down here, we order a Coke, right? Um, and even being born there and living there and having relatives that were Minnesotan my whole life, whenever I go up there, I find myself jumping into the accent right away. In a marriage, there's a lot of abiding. There's a lot of learning to live together, not just live in the same place, of learning how to share, of learning how to compromise, of learning how to love just like in the children's sermon, then along come your children, and then your whole life is changed. So while you've changed each other in your marriage, now your children change you, and you help to shape and grow them because we are abiding with one another. In fact, one of the best compliments I ever received was because I was uh, abiding at Texas Lutheran. It was from Dr. Beck, actually. Um, he had come up, I had, I, I had gone to chapel one Wednesday morning, and he was preaching, and now he and I had very different styles of preaching. He was very academic and very, very knowledgeable about all things biblical. And, um, and so it always felt like I was learning. I was being, you know, partly a lecture of, of, of information. And it was always so much to hear from him. Um, and I would always be nervous preaching in front of him. I'm like, I'm preaching in front of Dr. Beck. Oh. Um, I was always afraid I was going to say something wrong. But this one day, he preached... And instead of his typical style, he had, um, he had them pull up the screen, and he had this little clicker in his hand, and, um, and the people in the back were all cued in. And so uh, I just remember that his sermon, he would say, next slide, please. And this blank slide would show up, and he would say, now imagine this group of people, your family up here, remember the memories that they've shared, or, and then he'd say, next slide, please, then it would come up of a time that they were helping you, or... It was all these different wonderful signs, and every time he'd say, next slide, please, and even one time he said, don't you just love technology? <laughs> and, that, and after that sermon, I came over to him. I was, so, I was just so impressed, and I loved it so much, and he just had the biggest gleeful smile on his face, and I was like, Dr. Beck, that was such a great sermon. I, I loved that so much, and he said, thank you. I really tried to preach like you today. <laughs> Guess I shouldn't have been so nervous, huh? This is what it means to abide, to be changed for the better through each other. Jesus urges his disciples and followers to abide in me as I abide in you. Now this comes after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It comes after he's washed the disciples' feet. It's really towards the end of his life. And so I can't help but think that these must be very important words. They're some of the last words, the things that he's telling his disciples. And he's reminding them that he is the vine and God is the vine grower, that he is the vine and we are the branches. And that those who abide in him, those who abide in Christ, live, who live with and truly are changed by Christ, bear much fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's at this point that Jesus knows he's leaving, and these words serve as a great reminder to abide with him even after he's gone. And so how do we do that? We abide with each other. We abide with each other. So what does that sound like? We abide with each other. It's reminding me of something we've talked about a lot this year. Oh yeah, one of our baptismal promises, live among God's faithful people. Abide with each other. 
We're called to abide with each other, to live among God's faithful people in order to teach and to preach and to heal in Christ, to share with those in need, to care and love, care for and love all people. And when we abide with one another, we can't help but be changed and we can't help but change others, especially with Christ's love shining through us. We're not called just to show up. We're called to know each other, to care about each other, to learn from each other, and to change and be changed with each other. Here at Abiding Presence, we don't just come to exist. We abide with one another. We live among God's faithful people together. As I sat yesterday in TLU's Chapel of the Abiding Presence, listening to a man who greatly influenced the entire course of my life by abiding, uh, inviting me to abide on campus in a place where one of the first things I preached was to abide in Christ. And then as I ran through the reception, grabbing a piece of cake to go because I had to get back here to preach, I realized I was coming back to preach on this passage, abide in me, I had a new abiding presence in my life. And it is at this moment that I was completely overcome with gratitude for all the people who have abided with me, who also abide in Christ. So I share this story today, instead of my original sermon, to say maybe we all continue to gather. And in gathering, maybe we live among God's faithful people, our gathered people together, so that we can change each other and be changed by Christ's love, as we abide with Christ and each other. Amen.